Hi, um, my name is Martina. I am a VP of Marketing at Hyperfair. It's a company that provides social VR for the enterprise. Um, social VR for the enterprise is a novel concept that combines um, the enterprise VR with the social component, which means that replicating real life dynamics, interaction dynamics in VR uh, for business purposes. Usually, um, social VR is something that we see applied to gaming or entertainment. Uh, what, we, um, what we have done, what we're trying to do is to apply social VR and for, for business and in the enterprise. Uh, why? Uh, social VR is relational. It means creating relationships uh, between people and business is built on relationships, especially with all the relationships that businesses need to build with the people outside of the company, like uh, leads, customers, uh, partners, hires, candidates, so all the people that are outside of the company that have a relationship with, with the business. And social VR allows businesses to create relationship and interact around content in VR. Sorry, thank you. Um, merging social VR and enterprise VR, uh, we need to, to do so. We need to look at the two different um, current, let's say, uh, segments of VR. The social VR like I said, it is uh, mainly focused right now on the gaming portion, so the idea for people to uh, meet friends in VR and take selfies and uh, play games. And, um, and so it's a, th this is the main application right now. And most of social VR also allows for a limited uh, amount of concurrent user in the same environment, so it can be limited to three, four, five, uh, 10, 15, but it's generally limited to, to the, the friend uh, sphere. Um, the enterprise VR, what we, what we, if, if we look at the enterprise VR applications out there, we see that more, most of the enterprise VR um, applications are location-based in, 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 in two senses. One is definitely the, the fact that they are um, used by small teams inside the company. And so it's a, it's a very um, uh, controlled environment and everything can be easily set up uh, and controlled, all the different uh, setups, hardware and so on. Um, and the, and the non-location based v, uh, enterprise VR applications towards customers uh, tend to be individual experiences. So you, you put your headset on and you experience maybe a 360 video or it's, it's a very, um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very individual and, and personal experience more than being a social one. And, and like I said, collaborative VR, enterprise VR is uh, mainly limited to small teams where all the equipment is set up um, uh, pro properly and previously. And this, I think this um, analysis showed that there's uh, some challenges that need to be overcome for social VR for the enterprise to really take off. And these are, uh, first of all, social VR needs to be needs to be customer friendly, which means it needs to be easy for customers to access. It needs to be web based because with no web, there is no interaction, um, and it needs to be cross platform, so easy for people to access from different uh, devices and different gateways, um, and. It also needs to be enterprise friendly, which means it needs to be very easy to to install, no firewall issues, very easy set up, and possibly a, a software as a service type of, uh, of of implementation. For enterprise VR to be uh, a social um, social VR to be applied in inter enterprise, it needs to be scalable. Uh, and because the, the, the whole purpose of it is not having a couple of users in the same space that it's more for team, uh, but if you want to reach the broad audience that you have outside of your company, all your customers, all your leads, all of the different potential um, stakeholders you, your company may be involved in, with, uh, you need to be very scalable. And deployment needs to be quick. And I think that it for businesses to use uh, um, VR, and, uh, and if use it for customers, so it needs to be 
uh, very quick in term of uh, you wanna you, if you're a marketer and I'm talking about customer engagement you you may want to create a campaign on a regular basis and you don't want to go back to your coders or VR developers every time and lose the momentum you want to make constant changes to your VR spaces launch your promotion and uh, many different types of initiatives and so change uh, the environments pretty easily is very uh, important as well. So the quick deployment, it, it's really like a lot of the tools that we have experienced so far in marketing, for example, Marketo or all the other Instapage, all, the, uh, all these tools that have helped marketers uh, to create uh, content for their audience that is without having to resort to their engineers or go back to their coders and spend time on that. Um, um, and, and, and this also, the social VR for the enterprise, uh, what, um, what, what kind of need uh, there is for that, we, we will see, I will show you in a bit uh, some metrics that show the level of engagement that you can have uh, with the social uh, VR applied to the enterprise. What I think is really important is to consider that um, the, the enterprise as we are seeing, so on, on website, the use, the, the spread of uh, live uh, chat widgets or the, the, the use that businesses do of social media, uh, in my opinion, show that there is a need for from companies to, to find ways to reach their, um, their customers or their audience in a social way, so with, through interaction. And this is uh, what um, also a study done, uh, conducted by IBM shows that the millennial customer, the millennial consumer is looking for ways to, uh, to, for, to, to have a direct relationship with businesses. They want to direct, interact directly. They don't want to spend one hour browsing through a website, but they just want to have uh, a quick chat maybe with a you know, company representative and the company needs to be very open and they value the community, the community that's built around a particular brand or a particular product. They don't like passive relationships and uh, they don't like a monologue situation. So the, the, customer the customers is ready for uh, this type of engagement and, for, uh, for f and, and the enterprise can find in VR this type of um, the, the, the channel to reach uh, this type of audience. And as we know, customer engagement is very much an emotional uh, attachment to a brand that's the very definition of a customer engagement and being able to do this in fully customized branded environment where you can just enter being in the company and interact with the, the products that you may be interested in purchasing is a big uh, difference mm. what do we um, so here, uh, we, I want to compare the social VR uh, for the enterprise in applied to customer engagement with how uh, currently customer engagement is conducted. Um, social VR uh, for the enterprise allows interactions with people around content, so you can immerse uh, people in the content. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's a real life avatar-based interaction that allows to create, to establish not just uh, interactions, but relationships, and that's the key word uh, that social VR brings into the picture. Uh, it, and like I said, like I write here, it helps build empathetic relationships. So uh, it, you, you create this level of engagement that improves and increases retention of customers and cr help create, helps create communities around a brand, around a, pro a product, around a particular area of interest. Uh, moreover, uh, with the social VR for the enterprise, it is the user itself, it's, it's the person, the customer itself that can create, have their own experience. So they can, uh, they don't have to go through a specific set of steps on a website, for example. You just, you can just go to the company representative of the portion of content that interests you the, the, the most because it's all there, easy to access. And at the same time, for the enterprise, it provides uh, behavioral analytics that are much more than action-based analytics. And um, currently, customer engagement is done through uh, ma mainly websites, landing pages, video content, but all on a, let's say, more uh, flat, static, uh, and I would say technology-mediated, because in my opinion, the website and, and the live chat 
widget on a website is just the best way that the current technology or the previous technology allowed for people to interact with each other, with, for a company to interact with, um, uh, with customers. But I think that VR can bring this to a completely new level that is, uh, even if it seems uh, uh, strange to say that, but it, it's even less technology mediated because you are in a shared space with, your, um, with, with the person, with your speaking partner. And, um, and, and so the website is, a, is, a, is what the company has as a window on the world, but it's a monologue. And a, in VR, social VR applied to the enterprise can make this relation be a, a dialogue. And um, here I'm focusing on some metrics of um, uh, projects that, that we collected from projects that have been run by our customers on uh, um, using using Hyper for Platform. Uh, I'm using um, I, I use this chart to to show the level of engagement that you can have with the um, with a social VR avatar based environment. Um, I I want to reiterate that it's really important that. The technology e works across platform because this allows uh, many gateway points of access, and there needs to be no limitation for customers to be able to experience. And so, not, not to create an exclusive setting, but an inclusive uh, environment is is really important. And what we have experienced, we we actually tracked um, these metrics are taken for from ten hyperfair projects that were done. Uh, in the customer engagement segment. Uh, we uh, have done this in a number of different industries, but the, the let's say, the, the use case is uh, marketing and is a way for marketers and marketing agencies, businesses to uh, engage their audience. And what we have found is what you can see here, uh, there's uh, an average time per user spent in the environment that's uh, incredibly high. And with four hours uh, compared to the two, three minutes that typical of a website. The average clicks and clicks is per user, and clicks means uh, interaction, so actions um, is uh, um, 10 clicks per user compared to two to three clicks on a website. And in addition to that, what is really important is that people, uh, I mean, companies can also track, like I said, behavior before clicks. So if you go close to a product, that's rendered in 3D, but you don't interact with it, uh, or and you spend a certain amount of time there, uh, you can track the avatar behavior. And the number of interactions that people have is uh, per user is 14, which means that through a number of formats, in, in, in our case, it's um, through chat uh, or voice. And, uh, and so instead of having just, uh, let's say, this is really, uh, cannot even be compared to a website because obviously you have the, the um, just a simple form uh, for a contact us. Okay, uh, that's it. Um, this is my contact and uh, Hyperfair is part of HTC Vive X program.